My sister Coco and I are tagging monarchs this year, and we've decided to document when we tag monarchs, how we tag them, and why tagging monarchs is so important. The challenges monarchs face, the amazing journey to Mexico, and why they are so important for a healthy ecosystem. We tag monarchs through a program called Monarch Watch. We go to the website at monarchwatch.org and order a tagging kit. Once we're done tagging for the year, we will go back to their website and enter the data that we've collected. This data helps us in several ways, including which areas monarchs breed more heavily in, which areas produce more male or female butterflies, in which years monarchs are doing better or worse. Here in Florida, this information is going to tell us whether monarchs here stay in Florida or whether they go to Mexico. Because some of them clearly stay here, we see them all year round, but it seems that there's less in winter. So whether they all stay or whether some go to Mexico, nobody's real sure yet. And tagging here is gonna provide that answer. Since we started this so late in the season, it's mid-November already, we're not sure how many monarchs are going to be around, but we're going to try and catch them. Monarch butterflies migrate all the way from southeastern Canada to Mexico. We are here on the Gulf Coast, on the central Gulf Coast of Florida. Tagging here will provide important, important information on whether butterflies in Florida migrate to Mexico or if they stay in Florida. No one's really sure what they do, but it seems like some stay and some go. All Eastern monarchs, besides the ones in Florida, go to Mexico. But there is a dividing line, the Rocky Mountains. All monarchs west of the Rocky Mountains migrate to central and southern coastal California. It truly is incredible that these insects not even the size of my hand, migrate all the way across the continent from Canada all the way to Mexico. I am going to show here three of the most commonly available milkweeds at garden centers in Florida. Two of these species are not native. One is native. And if you are really interested in growing native milkweeds, then you should get not only the sw white swamp or aquatic milkweed, which I show in this video, but the butterfly weed and the sand hills milkweed, which are both also Florida natives. If you do not live in Florida, then go to Monarch Watch and enter your zip code. There it will show you milkweeds native to your area. There are many more milkweeds than just the ones that I mention here. In fact, there are so many that I couldn't even begin to name them all. What I show here is just a very, very small percentage of them. And no matter where you live, there's gonna be some milkweeds native to your area. If you get milkweed for your butterfly garden, make sure that it is pesticide free. Even if it is labeled as wildlife friendly, or a butterfly plant, sometimes there will still be pesticides which will kill the caterpillars on it. So make sure that it is pesticide free.
This is tropical milkweed. The most widely available milkweed at nurseries and big box stores. And though it attracts lots of monarchs and is beautiful and flowers year round, it is not a good thing to plant in your garden if you live somewhere where freezes in winter are rare. While doing research for this film, we decided to look into a parasite that we had heard of called Ophriocystis electroscira, OE for short. This parasite lives on milkweed leaves. When it is ingested by the caterpillars eating the leaves, it uh, hides inside the caterpillar's body reproducing it while the caterpillar is in its pupal stage and coating the butterfly's wings after it emerges from the pupa. Because of its wings being coated with these Ophriocystis electroscira spores, often these butterflies cannot escape their pupas or cannot fly and will subsequently die. And if they are strong enough to escape their pupa and fly off, then they will spread the spores to new milkweed plants. Because native milkweeds die down in the winter, then OE cannot build up on the leaves. Or it is okay if caterpillars ingest a bit of it, but when it's too much, then that's when it coats their wings and stops them from flying. The best thing to do if you cannot get rid of your tropical milkweed and replace it with native milkweeds is to cut it down every winter. And since we have native milkweeds gr growing, we will just slowly replace all of our tropical milkweeds with native ones. Our native milkweeds are still very small right now. So they were not enough milkweed to feed our caterpillars and to attract butterflies for this documentary. So we made the decision to leave our tropical milkweed in flower and in leaf for the time it took to make this film. But as soon as we are done with this film, we will cut it all down and start slowly replacing them with native milkweeds. This is giant milkweed. And my advice here is the same as with tropical milkweed. If you can, replace it with native milkweeds. If you can't, cut it down in the winter. This milkweed can grow into a huge tree if you let it. If you really want this to happen, just strip it of its leaves every winter. This is aquatic milkweed and it is a Florida native. It is the one I encourage you to grow. But there are many others that are just as good. Southern butterfly weed and sandhills milkweed, for example. These other two, though, aren't as easy to find. This is probably the most commonly available Florida native milkweed at garden centers. It differs from most other milkweeds in the fact that it likes a lot of moisture and most other milkweeds would die if they got that. So that is the last of the three. This is the egg of a monarch butterfly. Soon this will hatch into a caterpillar. And as this caterpillar eats more and more milkweed, it'll grow and grow and grow and grow. Soon, it will be too big for its skin, and it will shed it. 
there will be a new skin underneath. Every time it sheds its skin and gets a new one, it goes into what is called another instar. After about two or three weeks of being a caterpillar, this caterpillar will crawl away from its milkweed plant. So if you're raising them indoors, keep them in a cage so they can't get away. And hang upside down from a twig or the top of a cage. It will then pupate. The caterpillar will stay in this pupa for about 10 days. Once the caterpillar emerges, it will hang upside down on the old pupa. At first, this butterfly's wings will be crumpled, but after about an hour, sometimes less, it will have pumped fluids into its wings and will be ready for its first flight. These are some of the caterpillars we are raising. We put them in this enclosure so that they can't be predatorized by wasps and birds. We will bring them in here as eggs or very small caterpillars and they'll just grow and grow and grow and grow. This one is um, this one is as big as it's gonna get. It's up here on the roof of its enclosure. We have it in this thing so that it can make a pupa and then it'll come out as a butterfly and we'll tag and release it. to drink nectar. You just can't catch them while they're flying. They're too fast. So, I got my net and I'm going to hold the end of it like this and I'm going to try and get within two or three feet of the butterfly. I'm going to hold the net over it and then really fast I'm going to bring it down on the butterfly. So, normally this will work. Sometimes the butterfly will get out, but normally it'll work. And you can't do it on uneven surfaces, or else there will be gaps underneath the net and the butterfly will slip out. This is the tagging data sheet. When we catch a monarch, we will tag it, write down the tag code, the month that we caught it in, the day that we caught it, the year that we caught it, whether it was a male or a female, wild or reared. Reared means that we raised it. The city we caught it in, the state we caught it in, the uh, zip code we caught it at, and whether it was in the USA or Canada. And these are the tags. So you place these on the butterfly's wing and then people will go out and look for them in Mexico. So you just peel them off. I'm not going to peel any off because we need them all for monarchs and then put it on the butterfly's wing. Always, we always put it on the discal cell. For the tagging data sheet, we have to write down whether a monarch is a male or a female. The male monarch left has two pouches on its inner hind wings. 
the female monarch, Wright, does not have these. And that is how you tell the difference. This is my sister, Coco. Monarchs of mouths shaped into straws to drink nectar from flowers like these. Monarchs are often found near flowers because mm, they drink their nectar. Their proboscis fits right down the tube of the flower. Flowers such as these depend on monarchs and other pollinators for pollination. If they are not pollinated, then they will not go to seed. And if they do not seed, then their populations will not continue to thrive. In fact, they will decline and eventually there will be none left. Monarchs are the main pollinator of many plants, including milkweed, which is one of the reasons we need them. All right, it's day two, but still too early. No monarch should be out yet. Our caterpillar is just about to turn into a pupa. Lots of butterflies around today, but for some strange reason, the caterpillar still hasn't turned into a pupa. Starting to get worried about the caterpillar. Not sure what's going on with it. Still haven't caught any butterflies though. Starting to get a little frustrated. We've got one! After two days, we finally caught a wild monarch. So, okay, look. I'm gonna reach into the neck. See, it's flapping like crazy, trying to get away. And I'm going to grab it like, well, it's grabbed on with one of its legs. I'm going to grab it like this. There. So, see? Can't get away. So now, I need to check whether it is a male or female. Okay. So, see the inside of its wings here? Um, right here on this line there would be a little black pouch which if it were a male since that is not there it is a female so i got the tags and the data sheet here so i'm gonna take off the other tag and peel one right off okay can you come record the number on the tag? Okay, so see, I'm gonna put it on the discal cell that's there. And then I'm gonna press down gently so that it's on the firm. number. Here, that's the tag with the code and everything. Okay, here we go. You got all the information? Can we tell us to friend it? It's wild. It's a female. Our third female this year. So we have, like, we can see that there seem to be more females here this year. So it helps us like that. And so that's it. Our caterpillar still not turned into a pupa. Maybe it's waiting till tomorrow for some reason? These are paper wasps, a predator of the monarch caterpillar. The paper wasp is just one of the monarch caterpillar's many predators. The butterflies themselves also have predators, but both the caterpillars and the adult butterflies are protected by the toxins they absorb from their host plants, the milkweeds. Once a predator has tasted a monarch, it'll never go after one again, and it can easily tell them apart from other butterflies and by their colorful markings. In fact, that's why they have those markings, to warn predators that they are not.
monarchs and these tiny little butterflies can fly all the way across the Gulf of Mexico on their journey southward. It's day three and the caterpillar pupated last night at about seven o'clock, but the pupa doesn't look right. It is day four and we've got another butterfly. I'm gonna try and get away like the others when I take it out. Alright. So, just like the other times, I'm gonna pinch its wings shut like this. Now, I'm gonna have to check if it's a male or a female. So, I can. So you can really see the two pouches on this one. So it is a male since it has those pouches. This one is really pretty. So now we are going to get the tag out and put the tag. Discal cell, like the other times. You press down gently to get it on phone. Now, like the other times, we're going to write down all the data. Do you want me to write it? And then we're going to release it. It is day six and there are a lot of monarchs around. One of them went way, way up in the sky, over a hundred feet. Probably went over the Gulf of Mexico after that. We have caught another monarch. So, just like last time, we write down all the information and then we release the butterfly. This monarch is a really pretty one. It has such a dark wing coloration. And you can tell it's female because it has no pouches down here on that line. That is our fourth female of the year. You can see this rip in the wing here. It looks like uh, that's probably where a bird grabbed at it trying to eat it and it missed but took off a chunk of the wing but the butterfly still has enough wing to fly well so we'll be all right so now we tag it like the other times so we're gonna get the next tag off no no Put it on the disco cell and press down gently. And now it's time to release it. Our caterpillar has come out as a butterfly. As we thought it might because of that weird pupa shape and coloration, this butterfly did not form quite right. Its wings are bent and weak, but strong enough that it should be able to fly. And if it can fly, then it's going to be all right. It did it. It flew away. Our caterpillar is now a full-grown and happy butterfly.
butterfly. This year, the monarchs in Mexico covered only 2.83 hectares. In the winter of 1996 to 97, the monarchs covered a total of 18.19 hectares. The monarch's population has been declining at an alarming rate for decades now. There are many reasons for this decline, the main ones being habitat loss due to the development of genetically engineered crops resistant to herbicides, meaning that farmers can now spray their crops with herbicides that kill milkweed, and because of the amount of pesticides we are now using, which kill the caterpillars and even possibly the adult butterflies. And because of their overwintering forests in Mexico being cut down for timber and for avocado groves. But thanks to Monarch Watch, the program through which we tag monarchs, the Xerces Society, and other nonprofit organizations for educating people about how to help monarchs, and starting programs like a monarch tagging and monarch counts, and even individuals who have stopped using insecticides, planted milkweeds, and nectar plants, there is hope for the monarchs. If we all plant milkweeds and nectar plants, all stop using insecticides and herbicides whenever possible, then we can make a brighter future for the monarch, the flowers it pollinates, and our entire ecosystem. We can ensure that we will see beautiful butterflies and beautiful wildflowers for decades and decades to come. No butterflies were harmed in the making of this film. All were released within a few moments of capture. If we accept the facts, and if we take action, then we can save the monarch. For the monarch's fate rests entirely in our hands. We, and we alone, can save them. We, and we alone, can destroy them. But if we make the right decision, if we work hard, then we can ensure that there will be a brighter future for the monarch.